Good afternoon and welcome to our virtual reception and mass. My name is Anna Harder and I'm the communications manager for Holy Family Hospital Foundation. I want to introduce our foundation president, Ambassador Michelle Bowe. Other staff members are here as well. Kate Robinson, our foundation director, and Kristen Burke, our development associate. During this event, please keep your microphone on mute so that everyone will be able to hear the event with no background noise. There will be a chance for you to ask questions after Dr. Michael Espiritu finishes speaking. During that time, please raise your hand on screen if you have a question and you will be called on. You then need to be sure that you are not muted when you ask your question. We are so grateful to have you here with us. I would now like to turn this event over to Ellen Schaefer, the chairman of the board. Thank you, Anna, and hello to everybody. This is our first American Association virtual reception in mass to benefit the hospital. I'm privileged to be chairman of the board of Holy Family Hospital Foundation. We cannot gather together for our annual brunch for the Malads and the hospital this fall. It's wonderful that we're able to share together and join in community and fellowship today. Please join me with a short opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Let us turn to Our Lady for her protection and inspiration as we begin our time together reflecting on the work and ministry of Holy Family Hospital of Bethlehem. Let us ask our mother of all mothers to bless our work for the hospital and the Order of Malta. Strengthen us to be instruments of God's love and voices for love, life, peace, and hope in our local communities and in the land of Jesus' birth through Christ our Lord, amen. So I'll start with some very good news. Our board of directors has generously announced that they will match dollar for dollar every gift received in the next 20, 48 hours up to $25,000. What a wonderful way to double our blessings by doubling our donations. Please share this with friends and family and see if your company has a matching gift program because this gift and match is open to everyone who cares about mothers and babies in Bethlehem. Throughout our program, a pop-up will appear on your screen with a link to donate to this generous match. I think I see mine right there. It can also be accessed in your chat box at the bottom of the screen. For those who prefer to donate at the conclusion of Mass, there will be no basket passed at the offertory. The link will be sent via email. And don't forget, our wonderful foundation staff is just a phone call away. We can't thank you enough in advance for your support of the hospital during these unprecedented times. Now it is a real honor to introduce Dr. Michael Espiritu, who will share insights from his pro bono visits to the hospital. He is an attending neonatologist at New York Presbyterian Hospital, Weill Cornell Medical Center, and assistant professor of clinical pediatrics at Weill Medical College of Cornell University. Since his investiture as a Knight of Malta in 2014, he has frequently traveled to the Holy Family Hospital as a visiting professor, sharing his skills with the pediatric and neonatal colleagues at the hospital. He also serves as counselor to the Permanent Observer Mission of the Sovereign Order of Malta to the United Nations. Michael, we're ready to listen. Thank you so much, Ellen, and thank you everybody for um, having me uh, tonight um, to speak to you on behalf of the Holy Family Hospital. I'm honored as the hospital holds a special significance for me as a member of the order and as a neonatologist. Uh, like Ellen ha had mentioned, since 2014, I've had the privilege of going to Bethlehem as one of the number of doctors from abroad who volunteer their time teaching as visiting professors, traveling most recently this past January. Each visit has drawn me closer to the vocation and spirituality of our order. 
As you all know, in the 11th century, the Order of Malta began just steps from the Holy Sepulchre in Jerusalem, where our founder, Blessed Gerard, built our first hospital, taking in the poor and the sick regardless of race and religion. It was there that our name and our vocation as hospitalers was born. And today, 900 years later, at the Holy Family Hospital in Bethlehem, the order continues its presence in the place of our Savior's birth and our Founder's work, carrying out that vocation of caring for the sick, the poorest, and the most vulnerable. To illustrate for you tonight the work of the Holy Family, I thought I'd share with you the story of one of the many women our hospital has helped, Hadil and her baby Jude, one of the smallest newborns to be saved at the Holy Family. A few years ago, Hadil, at 18 years old, married Jude's father, Ramsey, despite the opposition of her family. They opposed the marriage because they feared Ramsey's previous treatment for leukemia may have left him infertile, and they worried that Hadil would never have the children of which she had always dreamed. So there was great joy when Hadil became pregnant. But only two months later, Ramsey's leukemia reappeared, and receiving special permission to be treated in West Jerusalem, he was separated from his wife for, for long periods of time, including that night when Hadil, alone, arrived at the doors of the Holy Family, only 24 weeks pregnant and in labor. She had traveled a mere nine miles from her village, but without a car and using buses, the journey took her almost two hours. She had gone first to the government hospital, but the doctors there turned her away because for them this was essentially a miscarriage. She was alone, her husband in a hospital across the border, tired from having traveled for hours and scared, scared for the little life she had hoped for so de deeply and that she was just told she was going to lose. Women like Hadil arrive at the Holy Family every day. They come because other hospitals are unclean or unsafe. They, they come because they are turned away elsewhere because they cannot pay. Or they come because, like Hadil, they are told by other hospitals that they are unable to save the baby that premature. At Holy Family Hospital, Jude was born at 520 grams, lighter than a bottle of water, at exactly 24 weeks gestation. Had he been born elsewhere, he'd have never made it out of the delivery room. At Holy Family, he was taken to the NICU where doctors inserted tiny catheters to give him fluids and nutrition. He spent the first three weeks of his life on a ventilator. For months, he was kept in an incubator, keeping him warm while he grew. He received special nutrition by IV until his intestines were mature enough for milk and then fed by tube until he could feed by mouth. He got x-rays and ultrasounds of his heart, numerous blood tests and antibiotics to fight infections. Had he been born elsewhere, he'd have had few or none of these and not a chance at survival. Finally, when he was big and healthy enough, he went home. Today, thanks to the Holy Family, they are a healthy and happy family. This is the work of the Holy Family, saving vulnerable lives in a region where they might otherwise be given up for, for lost, caring for women who have nowhere else to turn. In Palestine, the situation for pregnant women is more than difficult. There are barriers to high quality maternal and neonatal care other than the physical walls separating them from West Jerusalem. Unemployment reaches 70% in the district, 100,000 women live in refugee camps. There is no social welfare, no health insurance. Many women cannot pay for care or even to travel. As a result, many give birth in less than adequate conditions. The Holy Family offers them a place to turn to. 45% of the women who deliver at the hospital are from the refugee camps. Most of the Bedouin population in the region, among the poorest of people, come as well. And no one is ever turned away because they cannot pay. The Holy Family's state-of-the-art NICU is the only place in the region where premature babies as young as 24 weeks are able to receive the intensive care they need to survive, care that is comparable to that given in the United States. At other hospitals in the region, mothers are simply turned away if they are in labor that early, and their baby is considered miscarriages. On the first day of my most recent visit, I joined our doctors for rounds and was impressed by the life-saving care that they gave to a preemie newborn with pulmonary hypertension who seemed to be on that store. They delivered the same care we would give in any high-level NICU in the West. Within days, the doctors of the Holy Family had stabilized the baby and had set it on the road to do well and thrive. Today, I'm told she is doing just that. At other hospitals in the region, she'd have been given up on as hopeless. Whenever I visit, NICU's 18 beds are always full. 
half of the baby is usually on some sort of respiratory support. Most are not Christian, which brings to mind the words of the late Cardinal Hickey. We help the needy not because they are Catholic, but because we are Catholic. Regardless of their faith, all the mothers at the liver there are proud to go home with their babies, wrapped in a blanket and wearing a knit hat emblazoned with the cross of the order. It is a point of pride because by showing they delivered the Holy Family, they are saying that they gave their baby the best. At the Holy Family, where Christians and Muslims work side by side, taking care of patients of both faiths, interreligious harmony is nurtured. In addition, by providing a place for Christian Palestinians to work, the hospital helps to maintain their presence in the Holy Land, making, maintaining a multi-faith community. The hospital is a shining example of people of different faiths living in peace and mutual respect. It is also a beacon from which the Catholic ethos of respect for life is spread throughout the region. As of now, some 70 pediatricians and OBGYNs who have received their training at the Holy Family have carried that ethos to their communities throughout the country. Serving life, especially the most vulnerable, as the core is the core of our shared vocation as hospitalers and as Christians. Some of us have the privilege of living that vocation through our professions in medicine or nursing, but the body has many parts. And no matter our part, all of us are called to live that hospitaler vocation, spiritually, materially, and through our own talents and skills. But the body has many parts is true for the church and the order, and it is especially true for how we care for the smallest at the Holy Family. Care of the micro preemie invol involves not just a team of doctors and nurses, but also nutritionists, pharmacists, x-ray techs, social workers, and numerous other support staff working as one body. It requires high-tech equipment, expensive supplies, medications, clean floors, well-fed staff, working computers, adequate facilities, ambulances, and many more material needs. Without the donations that support all of these many parts, the hands, the doctors and nurses, would be unable to carry out their healing vocation. Without all the parts together, these mothers would be left like our Blessed Mother, knocking at doors unable to welcome them. Finally, some comments on how COVID has affected the situation. The pandemic has hit the Bethlehem region especially hard, with 10,000 cases this past July alone. Without pilgrims visiting the region, the local economy has been devastated. Most of the patients coming through no, long, no longer have the means to pay any hospital bills, and yet the hospital remains open to all. Despite the hardships, our dedicated staff has been working nonstop to care for those in need. And thanks to the most stringent safety protocols, only three staff members have tested positive to date. The NICU remains open and busier than ever, with many staff working longer and extra shifts while others have been quarantined, taking care of a greater number of premature births, cardiac and other congenital defects, and other sick newborns, in part because of the prenatal care that had been missed over the preceding months. With a greater number of charity cases and the need for more and more costly supplies during this pandemic, financial help is needed more than ever for equipment, to pay salaries, and to ensure that the families that have no income, nearly all of them now, are taken care of through our poor case fund. Your support will help the hospital continue its mission through this crisis and beyond, opening its doors to families like the original Holy Family 2,000 years ago, turned away everywhere else and in desperate search for hospitality. Your support helps save the lives of the most vulnerable in a place where they might otherwise be lost. And your support helps promote peace among peoples in a place where the Prince of Peace was born. Thank you. Well, Michael, thank you, thank you. And we do have time for maybe three or four questions. So please raise your hand and we will unmute you and you can ask your question. Do I hear from anybody? Michael, maybe you said it all. Well, it's, it's, can you, if, if not, or if you think of something later, we could try maybe squeeze one in later, but um, but now, this is a, a, another very special moment. Um, uh, I would like my a special presentation. I would like my very dear friend, Marissa Del Rosario Blackett, Dame of Malta, to join me here on the virtual podium as we present her with the highest award the foundation can give, 
It is our Star of Bethlehem Award. This is we give to Marissa with great admiration and love for your unprecedented commitment to our parish outreach and appeals program for more than six years. You have worked tirelessly to set up, nurture, and expand our parish and parish school collaborators throughout the tri-state area, to Pennsylvania, to Michigan, and wherever you're invited. I'm so happy that many chaplains are with us today as we honor you. You have lived up to the highest ideals of the Order of Malta and have served Holy Family Hospital of Bethlehem with expertise and humility. And we, our prayer is that you be showered with many graces by Our Lady, the Mother of Mothers and the Queen of the Holy Family. Marissa. Is Marissa there? Yes, she's there. So I can we I'm see here. Marissa? Thank you, Ellen. Thank you. And thank you very much for making possible this honor. I, if not for your leadership, encouragement, and unwavering support, our parish and education outreach program, including its Faith in Action initiative, Babies in Bethlehem, would not have gotten to the level that it achieved. Of course, much of the program's success was due to the clergy, many of whom are chaplains of the Order of Malta. They allowed us to spread the word about our hospital's work at their masses, their religious education programs, or at their schools. Finally, I also want to acknowledge my fellow dames, knights, and auxiliary members of the Order of Malta who volunteered their time and treasure. I truly could not have done this outreach program without their participation. As we look forward to life post COVID, the COVID pandemic, it is my sincere hope that all of you will continue to do your part to support this life affirming ministry. In addition to providing important support to the mothers and babies we serve at Holy Family Hospital of Bethlehem, this parish and education outreach program truly provides a far-reaching opportunity to engage more of God's children through the Christian community and the church, particularly through their roles as schools of human virtues and Christian charity. Thank you once more for making for this honor. Marissa, thank you again um, for all you've done. And that was a beautiful tribute to everything. So we do have a question uh, that showed up in the bottom of my screen. Did other people see it about, and, and Michelle answered it, about the number of babies maybe in the NICU? And the answer is the NICU is licensed for 18, um, 18 babies. I, I don't know if that answers you, but if you have another question about the hospital or for Dr. Spiri to put your hand up and we'll, unmute you and you can um, say it. But Marissa, applause. Thank you. Thank you very much again. Oh, here. Oh, will the doctor's talk be uploaded? Will the doctor's talk be uploaded? Oh, and I can answer that. And the answer is yes. You will receive the link to that as soon as it is finished being uploaded. Oh, and this, maybe everybody saw this on the, um, uh, the little chat piece. That our license, we're licensed for 18, but we have 21 in the hospital right now because there's not another NICU that can handle this level of care. We're delivering between 12 and 19 babies a day right now. Wow. Oh, and here's one from everybody. Um, um, is it possible to volunteer at the hospital? Well, maybe, uh, I don't know who answers that. I mean, I think you would discuss that with our our, our medical personnel, but um, maybe you follow up with a, with a question or a call to um, Michelle Bow or to our office, uh, if, if that's okay. Um, is there any other um, questions from the so-called audience, <laughs> the congregation? We're, we're all of the above. Dr. Michael, can you, it's Father Dave, can you tell us a little bit about 
um, your role in training trainers, you're doing education over there so um, that you're helping uh, those in the medical community there to grow in their own knowledge and expertise in this. Can you t just tell us a little bit more about what you do in educating um, the medical community there right now? Sure, well, bas basically, sorry, just making sure I'm unmuted. Um, basically, whenever I go, I put myself at, at the disposal of, of the, the doctors there. Um, I, I, was, uh, I was sort of uh, really struck the first time I went about how appreciative they were ju um, just, to, just to have that contact with, uh, with foreign colleagues because of their limitations of, uh, you know, their limitations on, on going abroad and interacting, you know, that, uh, with other professionals in their field, which is so important for your, your professional growth. Um, an advancement in in uh, in medicine and in nursing and healthcare fields. So, um, I remember the first lecture I, I gave there. It wasn't just the, uh, the the handful of doctors at the hospital. They just they had invited everybody in Bethlehem who was in medicine. You know, every pediatrician around uh, around the region. Um, so whenever I go, I, I put myself at their disposal and ask what they'd like me to uh, to teach. Uh, and you know, so I prepare a set of lectures for them. Uh, usually. I'll spend a day or two um, helping them brush up, uh, not just the doctors, but the nurses and other staff on their uh, neonatal resuscitation skills. Um, join them for rounds and morning reports and just give, you know, um, give, my, give my input, uh, ideas and thoughts that I have. Um, and really help relieve some of the teaching responsibilities from the senior doctors there because they're responsible for teaching their trainees as well. Um, and it being so busy for them, they, um, they're appreciative of having somebody come and, and deliver a set of lectures for them um, and just focus on that. And every time I go, they, they ask me to do something different. So um, they'll, ask, they'll ask me to lecture on a different topic. So um, really just helping to, helping to maintain that, that professional contact with, uh, with other, um, other doctors abroad. Um, and it goes on even after I leave because I'll get messages, text messages or emails from them now and then asking my thoughts on, on a case that they have or, or take a look at this protocol we're putting together. Um, and well, um, I actually yeah. think you'll probably be getting more questions from our <laughs> congregation now that they can yeah. find when you order Malta book and you know, you are uh, so responsive and we are lucky and, and uh, with great admiration, Michael, for everything you are doing. And you can continue the conversation later or uh, offline or, or uh, whatever. But, um, thank you again, Michael, on all fronts. And thank you all for listening and, and answering. And thank you, Marista, for your nice words. So now uh, I have the honor of introducing a fellow American Association board member, Gail Berardino, who is the development chair for the foundation. She's been instrumental in today's program and raising urgently needed funds for our beloved hospital in Bethlehem. You're on, Gail. Thank you, um, Ellen, and a warm welcome to each and any, every one of you for joining us today. First and foremost, we miss not seeing you in person. Ordinarily, our lives would have crossed, whether it be in Lourdes, at a Malta retreat in Wisconsin, and even at investiture. And unfortunately, the mass that we usually have that you're present for, that we share with our Malads and caregivers, at St. Patrick's is today replaced by this virtual reception and mass, but we're still thrilled and honored to have you present. So I was excited to see Ellen's background. That is actually the Chapel Holy Family Hospital. And I was actually gonna hold up my favorite card that I've been looking at, and it's your background, Ellen. We didn't even rehearse this, so I'm totally impressed. Um, how many of you have ever been to the Holy Land? Would you raise your hand? And how many of you, when you went to the Holy Land, visited Holy Family Hospital? Please raise your hand. Great. And for those of you who, who wish to return to the hospital or to visit the hospital for the first time, 
please share with us your name and email because when things improve, we would love to make that happen. Uh, in 1990, just to give you a little bit of history, and, and I will say I feel like the presence of Mary is, are, is with us. When I was staring at this picture of the hospital, which is the icon in back of uh, Ellen, I realized that Mary is not only in the courtyard of our hospital with her arms stretched out, but she's on top of the hospital looking down at the mothers and the babies. So we're very much appreciative that she is with us today. In 1990, Pope John Paul II asked the Order of Malta, that's you and me, um, to take over the operation and the management of Holy Family Hospital. Today, 30 years later, following the request, the hospital operates a state-of-the-art maternity, neonatal critical care center serving women, infants, and children. I would be remiss if I didn't mention those who actually raised the initial money to set up Holy Family Hospital and our foundation many years ago. Many of you are still on the board today. Many of you are actually present. And I would like to recognize Catherine Abel, Bill Page, Madeline Lacavora, mm -hmm. and the late Franny Harnett, may she rest in peace, as those people who really we're the, we're the people that set us in motion. And that is certainly not a whole list, but it's just a few worth mentioning. Over the past 20 years, all three associations, American, Federal, and Western, together we have shared the responsibility and serve on the foundation board. This is both an honor and a privilege. Located just 1,500 steps from the birthplace of Christ, the mission of the hospital is to deliver life, peace, and hope in the Holy Land. It's hard to believe that 86,000 infants have been born at Holy Family Hospital, and more than a million guests have been touched by its life-saving care. The impact is far-reaching. As Michael said, the NICU is there, it's at capacity or, or over capacity, but believe it or not, in one year, the NICU saves 450 babies. Pretty amazing. 45% of our patients are refugees, and in 2019, 47,000 babies were delivered at Holy Family Hospital. Guided by the values of the Catholic Church, the Order of Malta. Holy Family Hospital works to provide high quality health care to women and children without regard to their religion, nationality, or their ability to pay. This is truly an oasis of peace where Christians and Muslims work side by side to serve the families. We ask for your spiritual prayer, as, as we ask who, how can we help us today? If you were to ask, who, how can you help us today, today? We ask for your spiritual prayers. And that is certainly in sync with um, Father Karen, who will be celebrating now. Our chaplains, um, Please reach out to our chaplains in the American Association. We have at least 80 to 100, and many of our 32 areas are present today. It's never too early to start our Advent Appeal, our Christmas giving program, and of course, we need to mention our matching gift program. Right now, I would like to introduce the members of our board, and if you could just raise your hand as I introduce you, uh, Jean Burnell. Tommy Driscoll, Michael Heck from St. Louis, Nikki McGowan from Ohio. Thanks to each and every one of you who have made it possible. Um, we have donated $25,000 and we would like to offer a matching dollar for dollar gift camp campaign. Please consider doubling your donation to this match. Double your blessings and double your donations. How can you actually donate either on the link which Anna will provide or birthplaceofhope.org. 
Now, as we transition from our reception to our mass, it is my pleasure to introduce our Malta chaplain for the American Association, Father Dave Karen. Good afternoon, Father, everyone. Father Dave Karen um, has actually been to the hospital and with, will share with you the liturgy of today. Blessings to each and every one of you. Father Dave. Thank you, Gail. Thank you, everyone. It's so nice to see all of you and to see people without masks on. It's nice to see faces. And I say all the time, what's six feet among friends, right? What's six feet? As we stay healthy and as we reach out to others the best way we can, I want to thank all those involved in putting on this gathering today. And maybe you in turn, especially the chaplains who are watching, might do something similar in your own parishes, your own context, to help um, Holy Family Hospital Foundation as well. Um, you know, I think Dr. Michael said it best when describing the scenario. He was saying that um, mothers are turned away from other hospitals, and that should help have us re be reminded of the scripture story about the Holy Family being turned away when they were seeking lodging. And so um, I thought it was important today that our liturgy um, might be one that's a votive liturgy where we celebrate the Holy Family. And that we continue to look to Mary and to Joseph, and especially their child Jesus, um, as we uh, continue to support those that are providing life um, and taking care of individuals and families in Bethlehem. Um, so today, as we, we move on, we finish this aspect of our, our gathering, we move to the celebration of the Eucharist. Depending on where you are, you might have the opportunity to go to Mass. Um, in other places in the country, that's not possible. Um, and so uh, we'd invite you to celebrate this Eucharist with us um, and receive spiritual communion as well. So we pray God's blessing upon you and upon this very important ministry um, as we uh, seek to take care of mothers giving birth to babies as we um, stand up in our pro-life efforts. And as we hear um, from Matthew 25, you know, Jesus says to us, um, when you take care of the least, we take care of him. So let's move now to the celebration of our mass and Anna will help us to transition to do that. I'm praying for all of you from New Orleans. Uh, God bless all of you. And I look forward to, we can see each other again in person. Thank you, Father. Please direct your attention to the chat tool in the bottom of your screen. You should now see the link to Mass pop up in the chat box. Please click on that link to be directed to the virtual Mass. Kristen will share it again. Please click on that link to go to YouTube where our Mass is recorded. Thank you for attending our reception.